Hey, welcome back to the 5-Minute Bible Study. My name is John, and I believe Bible teaching ought to be blue jeans theology. That is, ought to be Bible teaching that's connected to everyday life. And if that sounds like something that would be helpful to you, then man, why don't you go ahead and click subscribe right now. It was the night before Jesus' crucifixion. He was celebrating a holiday meal with uh, his closest friends, his disciples whom he had spent the last three years with. Jesus knows what's about to happen. His disciples, he's been trying to warn them, but they've been avoiding it. And now they're gathered together for the Passover celebration in Jerusalem in an upper room in some wealthy person's home. During the meal, at one particular point, Jesus did something that was shocking. And yet something that is supposed to shape the way we live our life. During the meal, Jesus got up from the table, it says. He grabbed a bowl of water and he grabbed a towel and he took the towel, he took the bowl, and he began to go around the table and wash the disciples' feet. Now, bear in mind that in their context, particularly in formal meals, they weren't sitting at tables. They would recline on mats or on uh, low couches around the table, so their feet would be out back behind them. And so their feet are easily accessible. Jesus takes this water, takes this towel, and he begins to wash their feet. Th this is unthinkable. This is against all social norms. This is shocking. Why? Well, because Jesus is their teacher. He is their rabbi. He is viewed as their master. And washing feet, washing feet is like a servant's job, and not just any servant's job, the lowest servant of all's job. In fact, it was such a low job that not even Jewish servants were supposed to wash their master's feet. It was reserved for slaves, not just servants. So when Jesus get, grabs the water and the towel and he begins to wash their feet, he is assuming the posture and the position of the lowest kind of slave, taking on the lowest task in his day. There was a fairly well-known and respected rabbi who was viewed as really having the seven main virtues that would uh, help you inherit eternal life. And one of those is humility. And he was described as having being so humble, he would do anything for anybody, except he would never give up his superior position. But not so with Jesus. Jesus is so humble that he'll even assume the posture of a slave. And you see how shocking this is in Peter's response. As Jesus works his way around the table, he comes to the apostle Peter, and Peter's like, no way, Lord, not at all. You're never gonna wash my feet. Why does he respond that way? Because Jesus is his teacher, Jesus is rabbi, and he's never gonna be that low, right? Um, and Jesus responds to Peter by saying, look, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, um, then you have no part of me. What's up with that? Well, what's up with that, I think, is the point Jesus makes at the end of the whole experience where Jesus says to his disciples, you guys call me master and teacher, right? And that's what I am. That's the appropriate title. And then he says these words in verse 14. If then your master and teacher has washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done to you. You see, you can have no part of Jesus if you're not going to be like Jesus. And Jesus is a servant most of all. In fact, again, this is the night before his crucifixion. The very next day, he's going to be hanging on a Roman cross. The ultimate expression of his self-lowering and his self-giving love. And Jesus, in this moment around this table, wants his disciples to know, this is who I am. I am a servant of all. I lay down my life for others, and I want you to do the same. And Jesus is essentially saying the same thing to you and to me. Jesus wants us to be servants like he is a servant, not just as a, a religious checkbox, a duty we have to do. No, Jesus wants our heart to be genuinely filled with self-lowering, self-giving love, just like his. And one of the best ways to acquire that kind of heart is to look at Jesus in the upper room with the water bowl and the, the towel washing his disciples' feet. And then look at him the next morning hanging on that Roman cross. And as you gaze at Jesus laying down his life in a simple act of service and then in a great act of self-sacrificial love, as you gaze on that, your heart will be formed to be just like that. And so may you and may I May we be people who genuinely serve other people from a heart of self-giving love. 
Hey, thanks once again for checking out and joining me on the 5-Minute Bible Study. If you're new here and you think this kind of teaching would be help, helpful, I would encourage you just to go ahead and click subscribe up here. And if you want other teachings like this, you can check out uh, this little snapshot of Jesus' playlist that I've got right up here where I've got several videos just taking little snapshots from the life of Jesus. God bless you guys. We will see you in the next video.